Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, for um, braving the storm and, and being here this morning. Um, Chair, I'll entertain a motion regarding minutes of our previous meeting. Mr. Thomas on the on the motion. Uh, second. Um, anyone? Mr. Garrity? Ms. Bramer on the motion? Okay. On the minutes? Mr. Garrity on the minutes. Thank you. All those in favor of approving the minutes of the previous committee meeting, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I carry. Thank you. Um, and without objection, we'll move right into uh, solid waste and recycling. Uh, Mr. Hedros, is that? That's fine. And um, so Thomas, we have you this morning. Thank you. So I'll jump into a real quick. Sure. Uh, Thomas is going to give an update on the organic management plan and where we're at. Um, I know that there's a a community survey going out soon. Uh, I think, Thomas, do you have the questions with you? Yeah. You do. So he has the questions that are going to be in the survey. I actually will pass them out while he sits down and kind of goes through the rest of the update for that. And then the second item that we're going to discuss today is going to be the data collection from the towns as to tonnage, uh, material, hauling, uh, and, and trying, to, trying to create a centralized a collection of that data. Uh, and Thomas is, is, well, I'm going to task him with something else and collecting that data. But we're trying to come up with the best solution that we can work with the towns. Uh, so I think what Thomas handed out right now to everyone is kind of a data sheet that we would use or pass out to the towns and want this filled in. One of the things that Supervisor Conover and I talked about was that currently the hauling companies and or the disposal companies are providing that information to the towns in their invoices. Um, and then the towns at the end of the year have to submit that material into EEC. We don't currently have in the contract that we collect that data. We have that the towns collect that data. We want to centralize it and bring it into the county so that we have an understanding of everything that's being collected throughout the county at all transfer stations. Uh, so Thomas, I'll let you jump in and I'll hand these survey questions out. So, Yes, I think uh, as most of you know, the towns kind of report uh, data already. Uh, we get pretty good solid weight to data um, broken down by the month. Uh, that's definitely helpful kind of analyzing you know, how much different volumes we get throughout the year. And I think uh, if we can enhance the reporting a little bit more, uh, like the number of residents per month uh, and kind of future things, uh, like currently, for instance, uh, tires are starting to cost a lot of money to get rid of. Just being able to have that data, I think, I don't want to a different hmm. way to kind of dispose of them or recycle them. I think it would be very helpful whether, you know, look into shredding tires or something like that as the volume available to judge what might help us best would be good um, and i think that kind of extends on to things like uh, mattresses and recliners those are another kind of category of items that can be diverted from the landfill right now it's kind of cheap to do those so we might not need a different program but in the future if you know Landfill tipping rate increases, having that data available would be good. I think it also varies over to yard waste. That's something that would be hard to estimate. But I think there's value in that, especially with our organics management plan kind of in development. Yeah. Uh -huh. Kevin? We already have, we do this monthly. We could, I can just give you a copy of every book. I can tell you how many tons we take of each and how much it costs us right down to the, to the penny. Uh, and then obviously the, but, you know, asking, we have one person, he does all this, you know, and it, we work it off our invoices. We do a spreadsheet every month. We have for years and, uh, you know, I can tell you exactly what we do in Warrensburg, other than yard waste, we we talked a little bit about, you know, talked a little bit about charging for brush because we don't charge for brush, but, you know, we let it build up until we bring in the, the 
kind of factor to cut it up and you know but uh, you know to ask ask a one person staff to charge guesstimating how many branches and pile of leaves you have you know you're asking quite a bit i mean he's busy enough making sure they're recycling where they need to recycle and uh, you know and and it, and i got to be honest with you the recycling is starting to cost the towns and uh, you know it's not working out the way it did work out we still do it you know and and uh, but I, we can provide you that information weekly or every month. I can email you the report, and you can do what you want with it. But it's it's accurate, you know, and and we go right across because we've been fortunate to be in the black at our landfill. And that includes paying for our employee and his benefits. So we've been in the black, but it's it's getting more and more difficult. Tires. Uh, I'm lucky. I have a landfill person who takes it upon himself to find an outlet for tires, you know, so we, I think we we're starting to go to Hoosick Falls or somewhere, you know, they're expensive, you know, and then, you know, and then we take away the recycling for the electronics. Now, you know, you got to let them come in and make sure you don't charge for electronics and get somebody to pick them up. So we're putting more and more of this on to, well, at least in our, in our situation, I have one person. So, but you, I gladly will email you the reports every month. And, Mr. Uh, so, so one of the things that we were thinking about was, it, and you, you, most transfer stations probably have that because you receive an invoice from County Waste, Casella, whoever it may be, and it has some information on there that says the haul date that they hauled, tells you the tonnage that they took away, and it, it tells you whether it was cardboard, you know, tin, solid waste, whatever it may be. So one of the things that, that you, I, I think all the towns have to provide that information to DEC yeah, anyway, that, on, a yearly report. on a yearly basis. Yeah. So what we were trying to do is just track as much as we can in house, which I know when they send you the invoices, they in turn could send us that information. So we wouldn't ask the towns of it. We could just have the, the companies send us the information and track that. Down. No, it's not a problem for us. I mean, you could, I can just send you have, we'll just include you on the spreadsheet. And then you can uh, and transpose it, it into wherever you want to. And it, and, it, and Kevin, as you said, that works for some towns that can really do that. Other towns, who, I mean, you have one person, Greg, do you have two people? Three. Three. I mean, it, it depends on, and Frank, I think maybe you have one person over there. Yeah. yeah. So it, it depends on the towns. That's why we were saying we could, the towns that can supply it for us, that's great. The towns that can't, we can always seek that from the haulers to give us that information too, because they give you an invoice and yeah. all that information, that that all that information yeah. and tonnage and everything else is on the invoice. That, we, we, Thomas and I have talked about, you know, where we're heading with the organics management plan. It would be nice to have those numbers as well, but it's as, and uh, you know, uh, I'll talk to Mary Beth about it as well, but it, it's very hard to track the organics. The town of Queensbury picks up organics, and I talked with Dave Duell. They don't they don't keep a total of what they're collecting. They collect it and dump it. Period. They don't say it's this amount of tonnage or this many yards or what. They don't know. Uh, don't and it's and it's it's a lot to put on them to to track that type of information. When it comes to the furniture and things like that, a lot of that goes into C and D, and yeah. you dispose of C and D, so you can track that. That's easily enough to track. Uh, so we're ju we're just trying to and and I, Ron received this email and so did I and I think a couple other supervisors did as well Claudia you received it as well uh, you know uh, t discussing Mary Beth Mylot said and you know that she had talked about a, a collecting data from the towns and keeping it in a centralized area we're willing to do that and the, and the county is willing to take that on it's just there's a lot of other things that uh, Thomas is juggling but I I asked him to take this on he's provided kind of spreadsheets to you that he could do. And again, maybe we don't have to do it this way. It's hard for us to ask the haulers right now to provide us that information because it's not part of their contract. We know based on discussions, if we're not buying trucks this year, and we're not going to, even if we were to, to say we're going to buy trucks this year, depending on what we get from this grant funding, they're still not going to be here for two years. So we're going to have to renew these, um, these hauling contracts again for next year. And within that renewal, 
we could ask the hauling manufacturers at that point, hey, you need to provide us this information as well to the county. So then we have it also. Yeah. I know a way that we can provide you with the, the amount of brush. You provide us a tub grinder, you pay for it, bring it in every uh, couple months and we'll grind up everything and uh, weigh it up. We provide a tub grinder for all the towns right now, but they have to pay for it. <laughs> no, I mean, but but bags of leaves, I don't know. You know, I don't it's know how you would do bags of leaves because we put them over in back, you know, and we can't mix the leaves in with the, with the, but, but as far as if, uh, we don't take brush, if the, the brush, uh, even if, even if it's, it's grinding it up and then you'd have to put it back on the scale somehow, it's just double the work. Yeah. The, and if, I, again, if you want to get really into it. Well, maybe what we could do is, uh, Thomas, before this goes out, maybe you could highlight the, the items that, you know, we have to report to DEC on and ask that, you know, you be provided that for uh, 2022, right? Because the report would be for 2022. Um, but people need to understand also, not all the waste goes through our transfer stations. You've got private haulers out there hauling a, a lot of waste oh, yeah. as well. So this year, because the new contracts, a uh, new uh, contract with the county won't come into place until uh, uh, 2024 the um we can incorporate a lot of this into into those contracts and then the haulers can report directly to the county uh as well and that would be i think uh streamline things uh because they're providing it to the towns anyway so that i, I think that so but for, for but for this year i think the if we could at least get centralized um at a minimum what we report and the reason for that is that some of our friends in um uh that are helping us with this um they shouldn't have have to go to a dozen different towns to collect the information in other words in bolton it's easy we keep, like you we keep that information and it's not well, just for them the you know it's not that big a deal but i think that it would be nice to for them to because what we the goal here is to create a baseline right for our decision making going forward so the, the information we have is good information and um and if it's not we maybe we can help the towns with that uh, if you see what i'm saying so um so this year will be not complete uh, you, if we can at least get what the dec report requires to you then you can put that in a summary sheet and then you would have it for the whole county relative to the transfer stations but yeah that that's all it's gonna you know we don't know what the private haulers do right uh kevin so again going back to the private haulers we're collecting that data already because that was part of the permit okay. system that we put out that they and they have been on a quarterly basis okay. providing us with what they're hauling as private haulers all right uh do I know that they're exact? I don't, but they have to they have to submit their reports to DEC as well. Okay. So they they should be, or you know, if they are, they should be fairly close to what they're doing. Um, so, but we collect that, and that's part of our permit system already. Yeah. Right. Claudia, that was going to be my question. I thought we already had in our solid waste management plan that we were going to start tracking information from the private haulers, and we're already doing that. It's it's it was already we already have a year full of material. From last year. Okay. And then okay. my other question was whether or not that was also the collecting information from the transfer stations was also in the solid waste management plan. And hasn't it been it in was, there? It was talked about, that, well, I don't necessarily, we had talked about it after the fact that we wanted to not necessarily us centralize it. I think that's where we're getting at now is we're going to start collecting all the county. The transfer stations have all that information already because they're required every year to yeah, submit that to DEC. So the information is there. We're just kind of streamlining so that it all comes through us so that we have all the numbers. So so with the private haulers and then this information, we have a pretty good handle on what's being what's being thrown away, recycled, so on and so forth around the county. But if you only want the, the yearly total, you can get that now from every town. Yeah, yeah. Once they finalize a year, I don't know. Typically, do you finalize it by January for the? Right at the end. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a timeline. It has to be reported. But yeah, all we do is take our spreadsheet. And, mm -hmm. You know, the interesting thing though is we're starting to lose on the recycling. You, you know, the hauling costs are equaling more because you if you can only put two or three tons of plastic, which is tough to get into a container, and then it's costing you 
more to haul it there than so and you recall one of the um um constructive comments on the uh solid waste plan was that the uh the, uh, the data uh, in that uh was uh some of it was dated yes. uh and um and so one of the goals uh of any planning process is to have up-to-date and current and hopefully accurate information uh in front of you and i think that's the goal here and um so we're not looking to be onerous to the towns. I mean, it would seem to me that if you want, maybe you could, uh, some of the towns is, is easily provided. Some of the other towns, maybe like you mentioned, Kevin, may not at this moment in time may not be so uh, so easily uh, determined. Uh, and then they can't do it retroactively anyway. So the question becomes, oh, okay, if, if whatever information is important, you know, wh what do we need going forward and how are we going to collect it? Uh, what we have to provide to the state, of course, we can provide that through the billings and that we can provide, which we have to provide to the state. But it would allow people to, for example, to contact your good office and say, you know, how much uh, can you send me the numbers for Warren County for, uh, you know, uh, 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 metal, you know, and you would have that um, in one spot as opposed to somebody having to visit Bolton, visit Luzerne visit Warrensburg you know you see what I'm saying in other words that it would it would help us communicate you know what what's going on okay. and on the slightly off topic but on the issue of the recyclables when we collect the information from the private haulers whether they're getting the stuff from individuals or from our transfer stations do we know where they're taking it the recyclables they're, yeah we do yes we do uh, with respect to the cost, I think we could narrow look at that a little bit more closely to find out what they're doing with the recyclables and why the cost is going up to the towns. Kevin, go ahead. The costs haven't increased for disposal or collection. It's the hauling costs that have cost. increased. It's it's the fuel costs that have increased, so that in turn their hauling costs have increased. Uh, that's where the that's where you're seeing the increases from. That's why the county's initiative on the recycling center <clears throat> would pay. If you, Kevin's business plan he presented to the committee shows it would be a great benefit financially to the county and the municipalities if if we could undertake. And we presently have an application pending. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll, and Supervisor Bramer, you I don't think you were here for last committee meeting, but we have an application into the EPA or 1.7 million dollars uh for the same thing that we submitted for the to the r committee for for that recycling center uh but as i as i said that last committee meeting i mean we're we're hopeful that we'll receive uh that grant funding uh but again for the, the business plan showed that if we hauled for the towns we would save the towns a significant amount of money yeah the problem is it's going to take me two years to get a truck because they're just not readily available and i uh frank had asked me last meeting i think to look at some of the used trucks there there are some out there but dan and i've talked about it and he says you we can go with a used truck at a cheaper cost he said but the problem is is we don't know what we're getting into you know with what we're doing with what we're having to contend with with our truck like every other week we're having another issue with it. i think it was just down for a couple of days last week again uh and we couldn't move scott had his compactor fill over here and i said store the, the paper and cardboard or whatever that they were going to take for recyclables stored in one of the open bays until we got the truck working so so uh but yes that's that's what we would be doing with that, that, that money uh, mr thomas mm -hmm. well our plastic cost has increased our plastic goes to Hiram hollow it used to be around 100 bucks a ton now it's over two for plastic and plus the hauling I think the problem with plastic is it needs to be separated. You, you have to put the num the right numbers with the right numbers right. in order to have a market for it. Otherwise, it's a uh... uh, Thomas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely correct. Um, I think part of the recycling facility project and some uh, kind of topics I've talked with the zero waste group uh, with really only plastic number one, two, and three has like a, a good value right now. Right. Uh, and really all of our opportunities to kind of recycle plastic is going to a single stream transfer station. So really it's, you know, we're taking 
something that does have, you know, some good value and it gets mixed in with, you know, the right. paper. And, right. But, so, it, so it would be cheaper for us to throw it right in the garbage and send right. it to the burn plant, but we don't do that. Right. And I just to throw a plug in, um, if uh, Mr. Garrity and uh, Ms. Bramer, if uh, perchance uh, you have some nickels available through the ARPA funds in the end of the game, uh, although it may not be the 1.3 that was requested, 1.7, 1 1.67 <laughs> that was requested, uh, any amount would help uh, move this plan forward. And uh, up until and including the ability to order that truck which we know it's going to take at least 24 months to even arrive. Yeah, I had uh, I had the one of the companies come in that we typically the county buys Western Star vehicles. Uh, oh, they're way behind. And they are way behind. Uh, and they said that the earliest, if I put in an order now, because of course in the budget I have for a couple more trucks next year, uh, he stated third quarter of 2024. That tells me we won't get the trucks till 2025. Okay. So. Mr. Garrity. I don't want to belabor the point, but you know, you really want to break it down between box springs and mattresses and all that. Do you need that? Or because it goes into one container, you know, and then holster furniture tires is easy. It's they count them because they pay by the tire, but metal appliances and stuff like that goes into metal bin. You know, I mean, this this was just a, a very preliminary, hey, run through everything that you know of and and write it down and see if, but this, we're going to ask you basically for the transportation, the same thing that you would submit to DEC. You have to submit your recycling, you're gonna get your metal, your, your cardboards, and things yep. like that. That's what we would kind of look for. We know that a lot of the as I can get mattresses, some furniture and stuff like that. If you're not putting it into your your shed that someone may take, you're putting that into a C and D way and, and you have totals for your C and D. Yeah, way. well, I'll mm -hmm. we'll forward them over tomorrow. We'll get you the DEC report and we'll forward it over to our spreadsheet. Okay. We can go back some over years too. Well, I think we've come a long way. It's just um we're kind of at that point right now where um we um we need to refine our uh, our information and our data and um because we're going to need to communicate that information right and as a county we're going to need to communicate that to the public and to our partners and 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 so having all of this in one spot but i think that uh, keeping it at least for this year keeping it simple with the, the towns is at least then we'll have a baseline of the important items and then the towns will have an idea maybe you can then communicate with the towns on some of the other items and how we might be able to get that information uh over time over time without it becoming a, a costly to the municipalities and then we defeat what it is we're trying to accomplish in the first place right which is um so but i think it's all very exciting uh, quite frankly i mean the, this even this level of discussion at least in my time on the board, even when we were doing the, the solid waste plan, it was never anywhere near this level of discussion and understanding. And so I think we've come a long way, but it is it is it, it can be slow process. Now, Claudia? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. On this um, public survey, I think this is great. This hopefully will give us a lot of good information. On question six about the different options for what they do currently, um, I think you could consider adding, um, like for people in Queensbury and Glens Falls, where the municipality comes by and picks up yard waste. And and I know you said they don't really track it, but I, the city may track it by dump Maybe. truck load. Maybe. I, I, I'm not positive. I can talk to Tom Gerard about that. But that could be an option because we can, there's two times where we're allowed to put out just whatever, and then we can put out bags, leaves, and they come and take that away. So it's not going to landfill. Uh, yeah, it every, doesn't. It goes to our leaf pile. Every that's what we do. It goes to the leaf pile. We don't. But they don't have a question here about whether you mean you, you can compost. put it out for your municipality to pick up. There's a question. I take my yard waste to the transfer station. Yeah, I can definitely add that. I think we're looking to. Yeah, our GHD is going to finalize it uh, next week, uh, so I can definitely mention that to them. We can work that in. 
Okay. And I don't know if there's any other private composting. I saw these couple on here. That's great. I don't know if any of the other private haulers do anything like this or not locally. I think so. Very good. Okay. Very good. Thank any, you. You bet. Anything else? I think that's it. Okay. Let's move right into uh, and um, keep going. You're doing great. Just um, and all these suggestions are meant to be constructive. Which I think they are, and, and I understand that some of this stuff takes a little time. Right. Uh, Craig. Just a point of information for tire recycling. Uh, we found uh, a company that we got come and grab our tires, a couple of bucks each, and instead of dumping them in the first place. So we're going to do the 17 something, whatever. Yeah, and that that whole thing is still crazy, but it's good to know that our tires are still moving. It's that's a thought, or it was a thought that guy over there. Yeah, this was somebody to come fix them up and take them down. Uh, Kevin, mm -hmm. I I would ask either Supervisor Garrity or Leggett if you could provide us with that information because currently what I've had Thomas do is I've been looking for him to find a grant program. We had one a couple of years ago through Soil and Water where Soil and Water put a couple of trailers right. into uh, into our facility up in Warrensburg. And we filled those two trailers with tires and they were taken away. It was a it was part of a grant program that Soil and Water did, although some of their own funding was used for that. Right. I've asked Thomas to see if there's something else, but if we know that somebody's willing to pay for them, just like you two, yeah. we have a, yeah. We have a, a facility in Warrensburg, you know, my shop that has a significant number of tires because as you all are aware, the burn plant did not, they stay, they used to, allow you they to used to take them and they were that, and that's the only thing that they had off the last bid and they did not want to renew to take tires anymore. Right. So, right. Sure. Uh, just to be clear, we pay the recycler, okay. but it, it's at a rate of what it used to be on the previous bid. Okay. And also, up until this time, we were filling up 40 yard containers for tires, mm -hmm. having waste management. They were our hauler, taken down to the burn plant for like $258 a ton. So they just start to spy the ton and not even do that. Okay. About eight ton and four. Thanks. All right. With, with that objection, we'll move right into public works. Is that all right? Okay. Uh, just let me. Uh, Offer the privilege of the floor here. I didn't offer it initially, but if there's anyone here wishing to address the committee at this time, please feel free to do so. Sure. If you could. I would say I'm Barbara Jodry, and I'm a. Can you step, if you would, just step to a microphone, just so we uh, clear on. But you can sit down. You can sit down yes. here. Sure, you yeah. can join us. Sure. Oh, you can sit down, Barbara. Oh, you don't like that one? <laughs> Shy about it. Okay. Um, so I'm Barbara Jodry. I'm a representative of the Zero Waste Committee, and uh, Mary Beth would normally be here, but um, she asked me to come. And I guess the only thing I would really like to say is we're thrilled about the data collection and it being centralized, and it's really going to be helpful in informing uh, future, uh, especially with transfer stations and recycling, and especially as these um, items become valuable so that you know people you know the county and town can start making money off of these things and you can't do that until you you know kind of know how much because that that factors into who's going to take what and how um so we're thrilled about that and and really anything that we can do to help and also um i know that the solid waste plan that we that started us sort of down this path that the old solid waste management plan um, is going to need to be redone. And I mean, that's like coming up quicker than quick. Um, and I think in 2025 is when this has to be starting, you know, the work on that starts and having the data to inform that, which in the, even in the old one, there was a request for more data. So having this data, like you said, the baseline for that will really help with planning for the future. So um, we we want to just say great uh, um, and great job, Thomas, on all the work you're doing on collecting the data and anything that we can do to help, of course, um, that's our goal is to be helpful, right? So thank you. Well, Zero Waste, uh, all of you have been terrific partners in this and um, facilitators and um, 
and lobbyists yeah. and um, <laughs> and uh, advocates. Maybe it's a better way to say it. And 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 um, and we certainly appreciate uh, all of your volunteerism and and the value of what you have to contribute. And um, and we hope that they have, have you continue as a partner in our planning process. And um, you know, to be successful, you have to build a big boat. And you know, you need to put everybody in, but we should you really need to have everyone on the same baseline of information where you go from there. Well, I saw an, uh, a, a show the other day where they were turning glass into a sand product oh, as an example. Right. Um, yeah, Kevin. Yeah, I I would ask the county to provide us with the the town by town uh, results of what the private because I don't know what the private haulers take out of our community and then we can compare it to what we're collecting yeah. and see if it's 50 60 70 percent private versus what we take in the land because we don't ever see those numbers if you have them you know maybe just compile them into a machine. yeah and, and thomas correct me if i'm wrong we do but i don't know if that's broken up by town it's broken up by hauler yeah uh, and okay. then we would have to determine okay casella Paul's in Stony Creek, Thurman, and Johnsburg. Now, how do I divvy up that amount for them in those towns? Oh, okay. So yeah, I don't I have don't it by, correct, we don't have it by town. We have it by haulers. Well, there, Bolton Landing, um, Mary Beth did a FOIA for Bolton Landing, and they have listed out like all of their uh, re recyclable items from the transfer station and how much they paid um, by month and how much, you know, what it weighed all of that. So no, that we, could we certainly that be yeah, this that is private hauler. Oh, I'm talking about, okay. I'm talking about so, the, yeah, uh, this yeah, is yeah. my neighborhood. There's six different yeah. haulers. Right? Yeah. So I was in uh, Ace used to be in there, yeah. County Place. I don't know if they are anymore. But if we knew how much they were taking out of our community each. Absolutely. Month, we could compare it to what our transfer station was taking in. And yeah. the number of haulers is a huge issue. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, you know, we still yep. we charge our taxpayers in our general uh, general fund for your landfill, and then uh, some don't even use it because they have private haulers take care of that. Correct. Yep. No, that's a very good point. Right, and I th I, I think too. I mean, I can envision where you know at some point in time, you know, we'll improve on our ability to communicate, whether it's through the internet or whatever. All that information. I mean, any plan should be a living document it should be adaptable to changing situations and um not static it shouldn't be something that some recommendation that was made you know five years ago just may no longer be you know relevant today uh changing costs uh changing opportunities it just it, it just varies and um um, but I, I, I can I can see where you know we we could actually have all of this in one location all of this information and then people can access it or whatever purposes you know they need to access the information all right thank you oh and thank you for being here all right let's go right into public works right so the first item we have and there's no new well actually you did purposes before i think already so the first thing that we have on our action agenda items is a new contract this is for the construction of the ward of the 2023 road projects. You will see that there is not a, a uh, contractor listed yet. It'll It's to be determined. We're opening up the bids, uh, I believe, next week. So we'll have this well ahead of the board meeting. You'll have the tab sheet with the, the lowest responsive bidder. Okay, you'll provide that prior to the uh, board, board meeting. meeting. Yep. Okay, uh, Chair Alentan, a motion. Bring this forward. Mr. Garrity on the motion. Second. Uh, Mr. Thomas on the second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Uh, motion's carried. Next item. So the next item is a new contract, and this is for the construction of the Quaker Road Pavement Preservation Project. And again, this bid will open on March 2nd. Second. Uh, this is a federal aid project. We will go through the analysis and award to the lowest responsive bidder. And again, I will have that tab sheet brought for the um, before the board meeting. Okay. Mr. Garrity on the motion, second. Mr. Thomas on the second. Uh, discussion? Everybody ready for the question? All those in favor, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 
Uh, item three. The next item is to establish a capital project. Uh, it, the capital project would be H409 and its Warren County Culver Assessment and Asset Management Plan. Uh, we were, we had reached out to the Lake George, Lake Champlain Regional Planning Board uh, to assist us in uh, kind of some asset uh, management collection of what we have for culverts. As you all are aware, I had two culverts collapse last year and right now I currently have one that's collapsing up on County Route 11. Uh, we filled it in the other day but it's only a temporary fix for this time. So the Lake Champlain uh, Lake George Regional Planning Board Beth Gillis came and said hey we can get you a grant funding at least within the Lake Champlain Basin area to to record and assess all your culverts. Uh, they're You'll see that the amount of the project is eighty-two thousand six hundred fifty dollars. Seventy-five thousand would come through the Lake Champlain Basin, and then seventy-six hundred dollars would be a local match. That would be no funding involved. It would just be uh, in-kind services, uh, which would be my staff assisting our consultant, uh, and we would put this out for a consultant to to grab all that material for us. So we thought this was a great uh, a great opportunity for us to at least grab some of that information it won't grab the entire county uh but at least it'll grab uh the area within the lake champlain Basin. all right let's bring this forward for consideration mr thomas on the motion to bring it forward second uh, mr garrity on the second any discussion isn't there a plan in place already where you <clears throat> do this with for the city in queensbury where you look at these hazards this is not looking at hazards this is just looking at this is just looking at our our inventory of culverts in the county uh we have and it, and it always comes to the staff and what else we've got going on we have tried to collect as much data as we can but we just can't seem to grab it all uh because something else comes into place and it kind of stays i don't want to say on the back burner but it's not a high priority i just thought that and MSW something what is MSW. it MSW program that's that's a little different okay. uh that's right. illicit discharge and things like that that's okay. not the same as this is just collecting an inventory for us but this will assess all those culverts as well so in that Lake Champlain Champlain Basin area I think there's approximately 420 culverts ranging inside from in size from 12 inch to five foot or, or even bigger not just grabbing the information and documenting it with GPS coordinates, they'll actually assess every single one of the culverts and say, these are in poor, these are in good, these are in great shape. Soil water do any of that? They, yeah. they go around and test the water. Yeah, they help us out. Soil yeah. water. Yeah. Examples of that. Yeah. I think it's Glens Falls, uh, parts of Queensbury and parts of Lake George. Yeah, yeah. for the MS4 program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. MS, that's it. That's well, this it. is important because obviously they, are a lot of culverts and this is going to run into the many you know into a lot of money and that needs to be incorporated into our county capital plan mm -hmm. uh so that we know going forward you know what our challenge is going to be to uh to repair or replace these culverts and um some of them um can't be replaced as is uh regulations have changed uh, some of them have to move to um other types of uh, structures uh so this is uh there's more involved here than most people realize uh, in the old days they could put a squish culvert in and maybe two of them side by side. You can't do that anymore. And so um, I think this assessment, and I'd like to just thank Beth and her organization for providing us uh, a grant, a um, sizable grant, I might add, uh, to complete this work. Uh, go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, one of the things I was just going to add on. So again, this only covers the, the Lake Champlain Basin area. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we were proposing is that as a add-on when we put out the RFP for this, we would ask somebody to look at the remainder of the culverts throughout Warren County that the county owns. I, I don't know what the number would be, and we, we don't have to award it, but we'd like to at least see what that number comes in as. So maybe that would be something else that we could look at as well. Uh, I would there's over 1500 cold yeah I would recommend that we do that uh at least get a price yep. on it and and um even if we have to phase it you know Frank uh over a period of time but I think having up-to-date information is critical in terms of our capital planning um all right then um why don't I call the I brought it forward I need 
Why don't I call the question? All those in favor of item number three, signify by saying aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed? Uh, carried. Thank you. Next item, Kevin. Next item would be the it's a miscellaneous resolution to enter into an MOA with the Lake Champlain, Lake George Regional Planning Board. Uh, and this would be for them to administer the grant. Okay. Uh, Mr. Garrity on the motion. On the framer on the second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Next item. So before I get into the next couple items, I did put a bunch of handouts on the end of the table, and I actually handed them out to everyone at the table. Uh, we had some pending state local agreement from DOT that I originally had in the agenda. They came through. So some of the increases to capital projects and the uh, state local agreements are added in here have changed a little bit. So I just, that's why I brought the new uh new paperwork for you to have. So the first one is, or the first three. Uh, aren't these all together five through 10? Uh, no, no, they're not. The five through seven, five, six, and seven are together. And then eight, nine, and 10, I think will be together. And then we'll, and then there's other ones down further down. So if you want, I'll hit five, six, and seven first. This yeah, is, why don't we do that? This is to authorize a state uh, local agreement for the Adirondack Bridge and Beaver Pond Bridge in the town of Horican. The second one would be to establish a capital project. Um, and the third would be for the consultant agreement for, for that project. All right, let's bring this forward for consideration. Uh, Mr. Thomas on the motion, second. Uh, Ms. Bramer on the second discussion. On five, six, and seven. On five, six, and seven, yes. There being none, we're we ready for the question. All those in favor of approving five, six, and seven signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Not carried. And now let's move on to uh, eight, nine, and 10. So, eight, nine, and 10. The first one would be to amend the grant, and this is the state local agreement uh, for the Johnsburg Bridge Replacement Projects, H393. This to add right away acquisition, construction, and construction inspection costs. The second, number nine, would be to increase the capital project for, based on that state local agreement. And then the number 10 would be to amend the contract with the consultant to add the right-of-way acquisition and construction services. Eight, nine, ten. Eight, nine, ten motion uh, to approve second. Uh, Mr. Second. Thomas on the second uh, discussion. Oh. Can you just summarize what the local share is for these three? I can't figure it out. Let's talk about the finances on it. Yeah, let me get to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're in John's Uh These are Dippy Kill and Glen Creek Road Bridges. So the first one would increase for the Johnsburg, it would increase the capital project by the two, $2,974,185. The local match uh, that is associated with that is uh, this one says zero. Yeah. No, it's not zero. The, yeah. Well, none needed at this time. That's Supplemental two adds construction construction inspection costs phase to the project. Construction is two million four hundred sixty six thousand. The construction inspection is five hundred two. The right of way is fifty six hundred dollars. Uh, just give me a minute. SA number one it approves a Marcheselli funding uh, for one hundred eighty nine thousand dollars, and I believe um, oh. all right, so she and then <clears throat> wouldn't that be the total local cost? It's on the, the yeah, summary. Yeah, and, 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 and uh, Supervisor Bramer is correct. On my amended, even on the amended sheet, there's no local match needed this time because we already have the local match that we put in the project last year. It's right here. All right, then. Any other questions regarding uh, 8, 9, and 10? Oh, welcome. Okay. Yeah, there's a little local zero at this time because we we funded the project already last year. I think I got them back there. I got them. They're just I didn't know what order was what. And are we satisfied with the uh, response? Okay, good. All those in favor of approving eight, nine, and ten, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. 
Uh, next item, Kevin. So 11 is a miscellaneous resolution to rescind resolution 216 of 2021. This was to put the money for the construction portion of Palisades Road project. Um, that was to sign a supplemental agreement with DOT. They never signed it. We had some changes. They since came back with a new supplemental agreement. So we're rescinding the old one. And the next one would be to amend the grant with DOT and then add the increase for the capital project. Can we handle these together or should, do you need them separate? Uh, we can handle them together. Okay. It's at 11 and 12. 11, 12, and 13. 11, 12, and 13. Excuse me. We have a motion bring forward 11, 12, and 13. Mr. Garrity, Mr. Thomas, on second, second uh, discussion. 18362. Uh, there being none, are we ready for the question? All those in favor of approving 11, 12, and 13, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I probably should have said 14. So 14 is also a request to amend the contract with the contractor for the construction spec and services associated with Palisade Road as well. Sure. Item 14, uh, can motion bring 14 forward? Mr. Thomas on the motion. Second. Security on the second. The discussion. All those in favor of 14 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Is that ongoing? Here. It's completed now. Completed, completed right? right. Yeah. Wrap it up. Okay. Uh, next item, 15. And the last item I have on there is, and this again goes with that same project. This is to authorize the uh, superintendent to ask you to change order for the additional construction inspection services pursuant to the, that project. Uh, and you'll see on the resolution that there was a uh, original contract cost of 50,000. Uh, based on my, my, my ability to approve change orders, uh, we increased, it was either 50,000 or 10% and this exceeded that 10%. So I'd have to come back to the committee and get approval. Right. Let's bring uh, this being this far for discussion, Mr. Garrity, on the motion on the second. Mr. Thomas on the second uh, discussion. Projects complete. The, the, the change order is 267,000. 264, 382, 76. And then uh, I'm assuming those funds were already approved to be allocated. And one of these other ones that we the increased capital project in the agreement with DOT, we have all the funds that would cover that project. And there was a local match, I think maybe of like $2,700, which we had in transfers to capital projects. Thank you. All right, then we're ready for the question. All those in favor of item 15, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> that carries. Um, uh, Kevin? Um, we have something else? Right now. Okay, let's move on to discussion items. Uh, we have uh, project updates. Uh, anything for project updates? I, I do. So real quick, and I'm going to pass this around as of just, these are the pictures as of this morning for the Stony Creek uh, Culvert project on County Route 2. I say Thurman Stony Creek Culvert project on County Route 2. <clears throat> they, final, they have finalized the closure port and they have actually opened up the waterway uh, and once the snow clears here, they can start working on the upper part of that uh, culvert with deck and backfill material. Uh, we won't probably pave it. It'll be open probably late March, early April. We won't pave it though until June, but it'll be open uh, that soon. Uh, so it's coming along good. Uh, the contractor has done a, a phenomenal job, especially with the water issues that they've had. They, they've flooded out, I think the site twice. Uh, but they have a fairly large size pump out there, uh, removing material. So they're on they're on schedule with what we expected, uh, and and we it'll be completed, all said and done with pavement by by end of June, but it'll be open much before then. So I'll run through some real quick project updates uh, on the rest of the project in the county. Uh, Bay Road uh, in the spring there will be planning, restoration, and punches items. Uh, Stony Creek Road, the structure is installed, as I just said, five, final paving will be completed in early June. This is a big one, and um, I was hoping that Larry was going to be here. He's not, uh, but I think he needs to be part of this discussion. Sagamore Road retaining wall. We went out to bid. Uh, we received from very some very good bids. Uh, contractor is willing to hold 
uh, his prices through 2023. And beyond that, he's not willing to hold them anymore. The problem we're having is currently right now, there is a, a right away acquisition um, kind of conflict or dispute. Uh, the property owners uh, were given a an appraisal or fair market value assessment, uh, which was approximately $30,000. $30, and that was to cover uh, a temporary easement as, as well as some right away takes. Uh, they since have come back and said that the loss of business uh, was approximately four hundred twenty thousand dollars, and but they would settle for two hundred thousand dollars. So, with that being said, we I had this discussion uh, with Larry. We had uh, the property owners come and sit down with us. We went through the design and how we had laid out their docks and that they really weren't losing that amount of space. Uh, after that meeting, we thought it was a fairly good meeting. They came back from that meeting and said, we lost $400,000 worth of business, but we want $200,000. So I, I guess the next scenario would be, one, we try to have them come back again and negotiate something with them, or two is we go to eminent domain. I know. I know. Typically, eminent domain isn't isn't a term people want to use, but eminent domain protects the property owner. Uh, they will get, you know, what the fair market value is done. They they would have to do their own appraisal. Uh, and and again, for what we're taking at the very small strip along the edge of Lake George, uh, for allow us to build the footing for this uh, retaining wall that needs to be replaced. Uh, I'm not asking necessarily anything from the committee at this time. I just wanted to make you aware of that's what's taking place. Uh, if we can't come to an agreement, uh, you know, our our representatives from our engineering firm, as well as the right away folks, said, you know, you may you may think about going eminent domain. Uh, that doesn't that doesn't preclude the property owner for seeking more money. They can do that through the eminent domain process, but that would allow us to get moving on the project and get the project complete. Uh, so I, again, I, I was hoping that Larry was gonna be here to discuss about it. I'm not sure that Ryan knows a lot about this project. So I'd like to sit down with Larry and then maybe come back next month with, this is where we think we should have with this project. Where did you say this is? Sagamore. Sagamore oh, it's this, this. This is the retaining oh, that's right, yeah. All right, well, we look forward to your report. Okay, real quick, a couple other projects. These are federal aid projects uh, that we have coming up. Obstaville Road construction this year, Quaker Road construction this year, both the Johnsburg bridge replacements on Glen Creek Road and Diffie Hill Road. Um, state aid projects, that's the, the Bridge New York money or the Culver New York money. We have Peaceful Valley Road uh, coming up this year. And then for our locally funded projects, we have Coolidge Hill that is... In, in final design, Diamond Point, which is in final design, and then Main Street in North Creek, which the town of Johnsburg has gone out to bid with their water line. So that water line work will take place. So I was actually just asked by super, our, uh, our deputy treasurer, Rob Lynch, what we were doing with that project. And I guess I will report here that we will be moving forward with the Main Street project because the town is doing their water line work. Uh, and then this year for paving projects, we'll have Bay Road in town of Queensbury, Glen Athol Road in the town of Thurman, Palisades Road in the town of Horican, Corinth Road in the town of Queensbury, Valley Road in the town of Thurman, Golf Course Road in the town of Warrensburg, Country Club Road in the town of Queensbury, and Horican Avenue in the town of Bolton, as well as those other three projects I mentioned. Uh, and there will be more work on Harrisburg Road this year as well, out in the town of Stony Creek. And that's all I have right now. All right, let's move on to the uh, next item. The last item I have on there is we had a meeting. Uh, I brought up at the last committee meeting that the Warrensburg School District would like to tie into the, the county sewer line that runs for, down Horican Avenue. Uh, we had a very good meeting with the, the school uh, as well as their engineers. We think this is feasible. We, we think that the existing force main has plenty enough capacity. Uh, it was designed for that capacity, so it'll be a matter of of redoing the agreement that we have with the town and kind of making a three-way agreement. There will also be the need for us to have an agreement with the school district because 
as the town charges us usage fees, we in turn now we're going to have to charge the Warrensburg School District some type of usage fee. I don't know what that fee will be. We're actually working with the town of Warrensburg and Cedarwood Engineering, kind of coming up with a ballpark figure what that would be. And I, Mike Swan's not here either, but I would like to ask him the question with this reserved or with this usage fee, and I and maybe Supervisor Gary knows this. Uh, does this get put into reserve fund? So that it's a continual build up of fund in case something ever happens in the future. And that's why I'm thinking maybe that we establish another reserve fund. Well, if you're <clears throat> if you're buying capacity of our sewer district, it would, but if you're not buying capacity, it's so just this, a, this would be the usage fee that we're oh the usage to, fee, no, that goes to operation. Okay. Okay. Uh, but that would be what we would charge the school. So that would be part of the agreements. And we had uh, uh, County Attorney Elman was there. The school's attorney was there. And the town's attorney. And the town's attorney was there. And they all agreed that this could yeah. be worked out through agreements yeah. that we would bring back through committee. Okay, you don't need any action today. You're just, reporting, any just today. reporting on it. Well, that's nice that uh, it's a benefit to the school and it's not a great thing. Yes. All right, anything else? Uh, privilege of the floor, anyone wishing to address the uh, committee at this time? There being no one, uh, Chair, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion. Mr. Garrity on the motion, Mr. Thomas on the second, all in favor?